Hi to everyone. This is Alex from LCI Barcelona, and I want you. I want to present you uh, uh, the OER we have developed that is named Car Toolkit with innovative, sustainable design strategies. Uh, this this OER, OER at the end wants to provide a, a methodology to to develop to put into practice a design process that has. Uh, this uh, sustainable point of view uh, when applying advanced textiles in products. Uh, when in every design process, when, when we are designing a process, it's important to follow a, a really well organized uh, methodology that allows to introduce aspects from many different uh, um, sites, from the user, the market production, functionality, and, and of course the environmental impact that this product has uh, this, when applying advanced textiles that are really complicated materials with a lot of uh, great properties, uh, this process can be even more complex no? because these uh, extra properties that the materials uh, have sometimes add more complexity to the product itself and this in general involves a, a worse environmental impact or at least a more complicated waste management when this product reaches its end of life. Um, uh, this uh, methodology that we are presenting in this uh, OER is divided in four stages, the, similar to the ones uh, that uh, the Design Council uses in the Double Diamond that, uh, that are Discover, Define, Develop and, and Deliver. And here for this uh, methodology we propose, analyze, propose, conceptualize and, ration, and rationalize in order to adapt them a little bit better to the, to the, the aspects we want to, to include in this methodology. The goal of this uh, methodology at the end, the primary one, uh, is to, to um, bring uh, this uh, standard uh, easy to follow methodology that allows to apply uh, these uh, advanced materials, these advanced textiles into products while uh, taking into account the environmental impact and the aspects related to sustainability. Uh, as we were saying before, to design a product can be a complicated and, and long process uh, that also involves uh, a lot of people from really different profiles. Uh, and when applying innovative materials like advanced textiles, this complexity is even bigger because we, we sometimes need to ask uh, people from technical or scientific backgrounds to, to be part of the project. Uh, that's why it's really, really important to, to uh, bring into the team uh, these different profiles, these different points of view that share um, clear outcomes and, and agree the structure of the process that uh, is going to be followed. Um, because when sh sharing and agreeing uh, this methodology, this methodology works much better. Um, when, when applying this kind of materials, it's obviously really important to make a deep uh, uh, initial research uh, that uh, allows to, to have uh, clear expectations about what is going to be achieved. And of course, also a good organization when uh, you are working with different profiles and big teams is uh, also really important. The secondary goal is to, to try to normalize as much as possible the introduction of eco-design strategies in the design process. They should be part of every uh, design process that is uh, uh, developed in, in this uh, period because clients want to and the market is asking for them. Uh, and, and we want this, uh, this toolbox, these strategies to be part of the normal criteria of uh, design process. Uh, as we were saying before, again, um, these kind of materials have, can have, uh, not necessarily, but in general, they involve uh, bigger environmental impacts because of their complexity. And, and this makes the introduction of eco-design strategies even more important than, than in other cases. Uh, in terms of the learning outcomes that you are going to get with this OER, uh, obviously in terms of knowledge, uh, what you are going to, to get basically is a good understanding of the stages of the design process no? with this focus in, in the application of advanced textiles and under sustainability criteria. 
and also to practice and to learn about the most common eco-design strategies that you can find. There are more, but this, these are probably the main ones and, and the more uh, easily applied to the advanced uh, textile sector. Um, in terms of skills, uh, you will use uh, concepts, procedures and, and methods to put into practice this uh, well-organized design process and to get, of course, with the goal of obtaining a successful result. You will have uh, the ability to decide, uh, with obviously with criteria, which sustainable design strategies are, are most coherent with the project that you are developing uh, and to look for the best application for them. You will uh, practice also the skills to test and prototype the project um, in its different stages uh, to assure that you are moving forward in the correct way. Uh, you will develop also and put into practice the necessary level of empathy with users uh, that will allow you to bring uh, solutions that are really useful for them. Uh, you will be able to analyze uh, this complex reality that we have before starting a design process. And this complex reality involves suppliers, users, materials, and identifies the critical aspects that the project needs to solve. And in terms of competencies, uh, you will learn how to transfer doing and thinking from one discipline to, to another to foster this cross-disciplinary cooperation between different profiles. Uh, and you will develop a good level of communication with people from different profiles in order to reach uh, this uh, perfect good result in the design process. Uh, here starts the, the OER itself. Uh, this is the, the first stage. And at the end, what we do here is to explain that uh, when designing, it's, it's really important to follow a well-organized uh, methodology with uh, clear expectations, resources, and results. Um, also, to follow this methodology is really helpful to improve the communication between the team and the different stakeholders that participate in the project. And, and it has uh, important benefits, especially when uh, participating in innovative projects like the ones who, in general, involve advanced textiles. So at the end, these are the three main benefits of following uh, a design process, project like this. Uh, the first one is that it sets clear expectations in every stage and, and at the end of the project. It puts clients at, at ease and it decreases the risk of failure, something also really important when, because uh, when designing we don't know for sure that we are going to achieve the result we want, so we minimize risks following a methodology like this one. In terms of how to organize this, this activity, uh, this activity needs a, a team. Uh, it's designed to, to, to be done by teams, uh, small teams. Um, and it's because of, it's because of uh, the negotiation and the discussion between the different actors that participate in a project like this and reach the, the, the final result that you will get from it. Uh, we recommend to make it in teams between three or five members. So if you have more people, probably it's going to be positive to, to create like more teams. Uh, mixing as much as possible different profiles, such as uh, technical profiles like engineers, creative ones like designers, for example, business profiles like marketing experts or people from, from the business area of the company or the organization and market researchers uh, like the ones who, for example, come from the social sciences field, uh, like, for example, an anthropologist, for example. Uh, with the combination of these four, four profiles, you can respond to any uh, important aspect uh, that you will have to take into account in the, in the project. Uh, of course, not in every organization you have uh, these four profiles. For example, anthropologists are in general not part of uh, companies uh, or if you are working or developing this design process in a university, you will only have one profile, probably only designers, only engineers or only business people. Uh, in case it's not possible to include these different profiles in the team, try at least to, to think as they would think. 
uh, to try to introduce their criteria in the design process because these uh, criteria are going to be essential to get a successful product that is applying the, the advanced textiles in a proper way. Um, in terms of materials, uh, you don't need uh, any special materials to, to develop this activity. Basically, uh, a room with enough space, uh, big enough tables to, to work, and some materials to write, to draw, like papers, pencils, or markers, post-its, or whatever. Um, we recommend you to, to print the co-designs, the co-design cards included in this document uh, and to cut them and give them to the participants because this will facilitate a little bit the discussion, but you can also work with the digital version of them included in this PDF. Uh, in terms of timings, this uh, methodology is, is divided in, in four stages, as we said before. So um, at the end, uh, I mean, you can make them the activity as long as, as you want, but uh, we recommend half, between half an hour and one hour for every stage. Uh, in terms of the activity, you need to, to start with introduction. You need to explain um, how uh, this uh, product, what, what the characteristics of this uh, product uh, in terms of the user, the market, its main components, functionality, everything. Uh, you need to make the groups and explain the dynamics of the session. And then we start with the design process uh, uh, with this first stage that is called analyze. Uh, to, to make this stage, you basically need to answer these questions that you can find here uh, from the functional needs that this product has to cover, uh, the emotional ones, uh, how it's going to be produced, by who, the business model behind it, the system behind it, uh, and which uh, steps does the user experience follow. Once uh, this is debated and, and written, uh, you need to, to write the results of every stage in, in a paper, uh, you can jump to the next stage. That is probably the most creative one or, or one of the two most creative ones of, the, of this design process. This stage is called Propose, and here what you have to do is to uh, introduce eco-design strategies as after having understood really well the characteristics of, of the project that you are like studying or proposing solutions for. Uh, this is stage, these uh, strategies are divided between the different stages of the life cycle and, and well they are in they, they are six different kinds of uh, cards pre-production material selection manufacturing distribution distribution use and end of life uh, of course not every stra strategy works for everything uh, you it's you, the criteria of the participants the ones who the one who needs to to help them to to decide which strategy is, the, is going to be the most useful here you can see some strategies from the production phase, for example, anti-obsolescence, dematerialization, modularity. From the material selection phase, so when choosing materials, uh, you can uh, use these strategies to, uh, to choose a biodegradable material, a lightweight one, a locally produced one, low embodied energy materials that have a low carbon footprint. Uh, materials that are reclaimed or recycled, that are recyclable, that don't have any paints or lacks of other sur surface treatments, that come from renewable sources, that are only products that are only one uh, material, that come from certified labels, for example, from the manufacturing phase. Uh, you can uh, use uh, low energy manufacturing uh, production processes, you can reduce production waste. From the, from the use phase, you can encourage recycling, you can improve functionality, you can improve ergonomics. And here in every one of these cards, you have a short explanation that helps you to understand uh, a little bit what are going to improve using this uh, strategy. Uh, you can propose uh, to hire rather than to own uh, the product. Customization, ease of repair. From the distribution phase, you can uh, also uh, include products that are uh, designed for assembly, that are tools for education and communication, that reduce packaging. Uh, from the end of life, uh, products that are easy to disassembly, compatibility, that have compatibility for, of materials for disposal, material label, labelings, uh, and product take back.
once you have uh, introduced the eco-design strategies in the, in the stage before, you need to conceptualize uh, representing the idea using graphic design uh, skills or uh, drawing skills, sketching skills to conceptualize uh, what you are getting. And in, after the last stage, you need to uh, explain in a rational way the benefits that this product has in terms of uh, benefits for the user, improvements in terms of environmental impacts, uh, how the materials are applied and the system that is behind the, this new proposal. Um, of course, when the design project is finished, you need to present it to the rest of the participants in the process or to the other public that is uh, nearby or from the company or from the organization. And uh, this is everything. Uh, at the end, what this OER provides uh, is a standard and methodology to, to follow a design process, to achieve success in this design process. Uh, after that, uh, as a reminder, there are some eco-design strategies that can be applied for the application of advanced textiles, but also uh, in general or with small changes to other materials or other products. Um, and, and it's important that uh, designers and other profiles uh, get used to the introduction of uh, sustainability and these strategies in, in their normal design process. And at the end, uh, the, the thing is that besides uh, we uh, offer a design of uh, a set of uh, sustainable design cards, what is important is to practice and experience uh, create criteria to decide which strategy is the best one for, for each project. Hope you like this uh, OER and see you here in the Destex, Destex platform.